Hey guys, Michael here. So today in my M1 adventure, I'm actually going to cut out some acrylic and uh, I'm going to answer a few questions that I've seen on the Facebook groups for people that are just kind of getting started like myself and uh, have some questions on different things that they see uh, as other people are making projects. So stick with me. Let's get to it. So a family friend of ours asked us to make something for her and uh, I think it worked it would work out really well if we made it out of acrylic. So I used the opportunity and went online and found this 1 8 inch thick acrylic and this was a 2 pack 12 inches by 12 inches which actually what fits inside the M1 and I'm going to use this to make it. So before I actually can put it inside XES and start it up. I first need to put the monogram and the wording together. So let me show you real quick how I did that. I went to Etsy and did a search for split monogram and ended up finding this one right here called split regal monogram. Uh, this is the one I went with and I purchased it off of here. So after you purchase it and download and extract the folder, you end up getting these folders here and inside each one, they have different versions of those monograms. So for the next step, I had to use software called Inkscape, which is a free image editing software. So within Inkscape, I went in there and did file open and open the letter that I wanted to work with. Then over here on the left hand side, I click the text tool, click on the screen and type the word I want on the letter R. Then I'm going to highlight that text and change the size of it. So what I found was 180 fits, but since you can't see 180, you can come over here and type it instead. 180, hit enter, and that is the text I want. So to move it around, I just come back over here, go back to the selection tool, and I can drag and move it. And what I found with that fits pretty good. So I need to align the, the name in here on the R. So to do that, select everything, come over to Object, align and distribute and click on the center align right here and that shifted the last name over a little bit so you need to actually merge these together and i found this is a two-step process after doing some searching online so i have to come over here and click path and object to path then click on this nodes tool and holding the shift key, I'm gonna select all the items in here, including the individual letters. Click shift, so I'm gonna click, click, and keep going all the way through here. And then finally click path again, and this time we're gonna select union. So from there, you can do a save as, and save it as something that way you don't mess up your original letter R that you downloaded from the Etsy site. And then you can import that into the XCS software. Let me show you what it looks like in XCS. So we're back in XCS. I'm going to click on image. I'm going to open the letter R. Zoom out, holding down control in the mouse wheel. And there's our monogram letter with the word of choice in the in there and you can change it to cut or engrave or do whatever you want with it and of course you can resize it so as you can tell it's not that hard to make this with using the free inkscape software and once you buy that uh, monogram or whatever you're going to make on etsy just put it all together and following those steps not that bad uh, let's put it in the m1 and then let's get back to some tips and tricks so this is my setup that I use for the M1 to cut the acrylic. I have the base plate, and on top of that, I use a piece of galvalume or aluminum. And then on top of that, I use a wire mesh uh, in place of a honeycomb. If you notice, I have a couple of magnets on the corners of that to hold it in place. Finally, I'll stick the acrylic on top of that. Now that I have my acrylic sandwich ready to go, I'm going to toss it inside the M1 so we can get to cutting. All right, so here's my M1 sitting on top of a table saw. I'm going to stick the base in here and follow it up with the gavelin plate and mesh on top of that. And then finally, I'm going to insert the acrylic. Make sure when you insert any material inside the M1 that it is underneath the laser so that you can use the auto measure feature. Stepping over to the XCS software, as you can see, I have my 
uh, monogram ready to go. I'm going to align it as best I can on top of the acrylic using the camera. Then after that, you have to use the framing feature. Take a peek inside the M1 to make sure it's actually going to work before you actually send it to do the cut. Okay, so let me set the defined material to the 3 millimeter black acrylic, which is already built into the XCS software. Then I'm going to use the auto measure feature to adjust the focal point of that laser. And once I get those two done, I can hit start and start the cutting process. Okay, so now that that's running, it's going to take 73 minutes for that project. So while we wait, let's talk prisms. Why do we have prisms? What are they used for? So the prisms that come with your M1, the purpose of them is to put an air gap between what you're going to be cutting on versus the base plate to uh, allow that laser to penetrate all the way through, not have any kind of reflection back up, uh, causing burn marks on the bottom, uh, charring, and also it gives you a cleaner cut having that air gap in there. Now, um, one thing you can do above and beyond the prisms that come with it is get yourself a honeycomb. Now, I have a homemade honeycomb, but this is sort of what it looks like. It's a little bit thicker when you buy them from uh, offline. They, they, um, they come with a base plate usually, and it's just a grid that looks something like this. So what's the advantage of this over the prisms? Well, this gives a full coverage uh, surface. So even when you cut a small piece, it won't fall through the grate of this honeycomb. Whereas you have your prisms, in, you know, about an inch apart, if you cut something small, it's going to fall down and get, may get messed up and shift a little bit. So the honeycomb is definitely an upgrade over the prisms, although not needed. Also, um, talking about the base plate, you want to protect your base plate. When you're cutting something, engraving something, protect your base plate. So a lot of people use aluminum foil when they first start. If you can find some thick grilling aluminum foil, that's a lot thicker. Normally you can kind of double it up or something to make it thicker. Also, you can go to Home Depot and pick up a sheet of aluminum, put that on the base plate. The reason why you want to do that is because when you use a cutting mat on that base plate, you want that cutting mat to be able to stick to the base plate and not move around. The cutting mats on the M1 actually have two removable films, one on the top and one on the bottom. And what you'll have to do is remove the bottom one, stick it on the base plate, and then remove that top film to stick your material, your vinyl or whatever to it. If you don't do that, it's going to slide around when you're trying to use the blade and that's not going to work very well. So you definitely want to keep your uh, base plate clean and protect it. So speaking of clean, you definitely want to clean your M1 on a regular basis. I usually clean mine when it starts smelling like a charcoal grill, um, when it starts like start smelling that soot smell. Um, it's probably better to do it even more often than that, but you definitely want to clean it. Keep it dust free on the inside, wipe it down. Keep that laser head clean. If you haven't seen a cleaning video, I did a cleaning video when I had a fire in my M1. That'll show you the kind of the basics of how you actually clean that M1 and keep it in tip top shape. So another thing about the M1 is the camera. So the camera is great. It does a really good job of getting you close in the uh, position of where you're gonna put your material or where you're gonna put your image on top of your material. However, the camera is not 100% accurate. You cannot depend on that. The best way to get the, the, I guess, most accurate from that camera is put it as close to the back of the M1 as you can. Since the camera's in the back, looking down at an angle, the closer you put that material to that camera, the more accurate it will be. So one final trick you can do to kind of cut down the smoke smell when you actually exhaust it out somewhere using the hose, if you take a small piece of cloth and kind of put it in the back above where that exhaust fan is at and kind of block that air, It'll actually block it so that the air is forced outside the exhaust port instead of leaking out the top of your M1. And here it is. Came out really good. This one's about 11 and a quarter inches uh, tall and, I don't know, 10 and three quarter inches wide or so. I could probably squeeze a little bit more out of this, but that's pretty much the maximum you can get out of the M1 under uh, one go at it. Unless you've come up with a way to do it in two different sections and put it together but I needed a single piece. I'm really stoked at how well this came out. It, it was super easy. I did it on a honeycomb. And when I did that, as you can see, it just came right up and the pieces, they just pulled right off. It was, it was no problem at all. So I am really happy with how this came out. Um, 
next time I make a video, I'm actually going to use this stuff you see off to the right here. So what this what this is is a uh, a secret weapon when it comes to etching on glass. So I'm going to show that in my next video. Until then, I'll see you next time.